Hi everyone, welcome, John here. This is part two of the uh, rendering dynamic content um, using Beowulf as the example. So this is getting all the products from the individual product pages and getting the information from them. So this is about where we left off. Um, we're using requests HTML and importing HTML session to start a session for us. And we'll key, the key point is the r.html.render. Now that uses um, a browser in the background to quickly and efficiently load up the page for us and then allow us to access the HTML. So when I would run this, this is what we're getting out. So we're getting the name, a little bit of subtext, uh, rating if there is one, the price and whether the item is in stock or not. So what we would want to do now is we would want to turn this into something a bit more useful um, and a bit more readable and, and, and sort of more customizable as well. So we're going to do the, follow the three steps. So the first one, which is the request and then pass and then the output. Um, we're actually going to deal with the pagination in here as well. So the first thing we want to do is we want to deal with our request. So I'm going to take the, this first part here. Um, I'm going to leave the S is equal to session uh, outside of this because I think we're going to need that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create our first function and we're going to call this request and then we're going to give it a URL. And then within that, we are going to indent all of this. We're going to move that in there. And what we want to do is we want to actually just return this element. So if we remember from the last video, we use the XPath to find this element that's got all of the products in it. So we want to just return that because we're going to save that into a variable for the next function. So we can just do return. And what that'll do is it will take the URL that we give it and it will render the page and then it will return the product the products container. The second part is the pass. So we want to create a new function, we'll call it pass. And we need to give it the products that we're going to call. So I'm just going to put products in here. You could call this whatever you like, um, but it's just to so it's clear so we can see what it is. Um, I'm going to indent all of this. I'm going to put that in there. We don't actually need to return anything out of this function because this is actually just going to do all the pass work for us. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into uh, a dictionary. And we're going to, at the end of our function, we're going to output, uh, sorry, we're going to append our dictionary to a list. So I'll create a new list up here, drink list, we'll create a blank list. Um, this is just the easy way to do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to say drink, and then we'll just fill this in, name is name, uh, subtext, we can just call that subtext. So this is just creating a dictionary so we can have a list of dictionaries with all the product information. Price, price, uh, rating, can't spell. And what else do we have? Stock. Stock. Okay. So to test that this is working, I'm going to uh, print drink there like that. So what we can do is if I clear this terminal down here, um, I'll make this a bit bigger for now so we can see it a bit better. But you can actually use the um, interactive Python uh, terminal uh, interpreter in the VS Code terminal. So if we do Python, it's Python 3 in my case, it may very well just be Python in yours, dash i and then we put in our pi. What it's going to do is it's going to give us this and that means we are now using the interactive version of this, this script and this is where we can test to see that our functions are working properly. So I'm going to copy the URL because we need to put it into our request function. But if we look at our request function it's going to return this information. So if we don't save this return into a variable it's just going to print it to the screen and then we can't use it. So I'm going to say products equal to and then we call our function request and then put our URL. Now what that's going to do is it's going to run through this with the URL we gave it. It's going to render the page and then it's going to save this into our products. So now what we can do is if we scroll down so we can see our next function, the pass, and it should print each and every drink. So let's see what works, see if this works. Pass and products. Now, depending what, what this is, is what this is called. So whatever you call this is what you call this, not here. This just means it's a variable. So there we go. We can see it's passing the information and we're getting our dictionary 
all out with all that with all the information there. So now I know that both of these functions work just fine. So we can actually collapse that one and that one. So for the output, which is the third function, um, what we can do is we can use pandas now. Pandas is a, is a big library used for lots of different things like data science. So to use it just to put stuff into a data frame and then export to CSV, I don't know. I quite like it because it's quick and easy. It works for these functions and uh, we can just do it in three basic lines. So I'm going to import that now. Import pandas as PD, which is the standard. And then actually we just need to go back to this one. Instead of printing it, we need to do drinks list dot append so every run through we are going to append our new uh, drink with all the information to the list so then we can go ahead and do our new function so let's call this output uh, we don't need to put anything in there because this is just going to run as it is when we call it up and we're going to do df is equal to pd dot data frame so this is creating a pandas data frame with our drink list and then we just do df.2 csv and let's call this uh, drinks uh, demo.csv that should work nicely so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a print statement at the end of this so we can actually see that something happens so we'll do save to csv file okay there we go so just to quickly recap we've done our request which returns the container with all of the products in we save that into a variable and then we put that variable into our pass which gets all the information out for us adds everything to our list and then we and the output we do our list and we save it to csv using pandas make sure that's saved go back to our inter oh i missed as pd there we go let's go into our interactive uh, terminal again prompt and let's do Go back up, there's our products request. Uh, again, the URL goes in there. Let's run that and that will get uh, the, all the products for us and return it and save into our variable and then do our pass products. Again, this needs to be the same as this one. So this has to match that. Let's do that. And now we're not actually printing anything from this uh, function here. So we're just gonna have to hope that it's working. Might take a little while to run through all the products. There we go. Now we just do output like this, and we should save to CSV file. And if I go here, drinks demo, we can see that we have got a list of 47 products with all the information stored for us in there. So that's great. So I'm gonna make one little amend to our DF to CSV, and I'm gonna put index is equal to false. This just gets rid of this here, so we get um, we don't have the 0, 1, 2, 3 index, we just use the line numbers. Okay, so that's the nice and easy way to turn that into something that's a bit more readable, you don't have to repeat yourself. So all you would do to make that run without the interactive terminal is just copy your lines that you did down here. We know that they, would, they, they work. Put that there, pass the products, and then output just like that and we could run that and we would get the same output each time so how do we want to do it with pagination well we've got a few things that we need to check first we need to go to the website and we need to see how it deals with pages so the thing I like to do is just go right to the very end find the last page and the very very end so we've got page 17 and you can just see here that the URL has actually changed and it now has a page is equal to and a number at the end. So I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to change it to something random, let's say 5 and check that it loads up. Now that we know that there was 17, what happens if we change it to 18? Okay, so we get nothing. That's good. Some, some websites, if you put 18 in, it actually just reloads the original page and that's a bit more difficult because then you have to check the first product to make sure you're not overwriting it in your loop but this one just gives us nothing so that's good so let's copy the URL let's just paste that in there for now we can get rid of this one we don't need that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a while loop now if you do while true it will never end at all until it hits an error um, so we can just do while true 
like this. So, oh, capital, that's wrong. There we go. Now, something is this loop is going to keep going through because this is true. But we're going to use another method to break out of it. So, what we want to do is we want to say, we want to use our function. So, products is equal to, like this one here, request, and then put in the URL that I just copied that has the page information in it. Okay. Just like that. So, if we delete that, we've done that one. Now we can see here that the page number is right here. So I'm going to use an F string for this. And what that means is that um, when we loop through the F means that it's going to be replacing right here. So I'm going to call this variable X. So every time we go through, whatever X is, is going to be put here. And we're going to use that as our page number. So outside our loop, I'm going to put X is equal to one for our first page. The next thing that we need to do is we need to run our pass so we want to pass products just like we did before and then we want to have the output somewhere as well the output is a bit different because we don't want to put it in our while loop we want to get to the end of all the pages then break out of our while loop and then have the output so i'm going to put that underneath what we also need to do is every time we loop through this we need to add one to x so I'm going to say x is equal to x plus 1. And that means every time we go through this little loop here, it adds a number to x. So our net x will start at 1 because it's outside of our loop. And every time it loops through, x will have 1 added to it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. As it stands, this would probably work. The only problem is that when we get to page 18 and we get this, it will fail because it will try to find something that isn't there. So now if we, we don't need to do our interactive, we can just do run. So we're not going to see anything happen whilst it's doing page 17. We're going to add some print statements in, in a minute. Um, and then we're going to see it's going to fail when it tries to do number 18. So it can't find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a try and accept. So we're going to try and do this. And if it fails, we're going to do this. Now, if it fails, we want to break out of our while loop. So I'm going to put break. And I'm also going to put some print statements in so we can see what's happening. And this one, I'm just going to say no more items. Something like that will do. Um, now, underneath here, this is the one products, uh, sorry, request, is where it does the render. So this is where we want, under here, we want to put print. Let's just say rendering page. Actually, no, let's say getting items. From page. We want to do pass products, get that there. Now, because every run through pass we append to our drinks list, let's print out the length of the drinks list. So if we print uh, total items and then let's do length drinks list like that. Because we're going to loop through a lot of different pages, I'm actually going to add in uh, import time and I'm going to put underneath here, right at the very end, time.sleep and we'll say two. Now we're just that's just going to break up the amount of requests that we send to the server. Um, so let's start on page 17 and let's see again what happens so hopefully we should get some print statements in now as well so we're getting items from page that means we've got to this line so it's picked up 28 items from that page which sounds about right because that will be the last page and now it says no more items so we hit our accept so it looks for the element which wasn't there because we've gone to the last page and there's no more items we've saved to csv so if we go look at our drinks list demo now there's only 28 29 lines 28 items okay so what we could do is just we could put in another f string here and we could say getting an item from page x so we know what page number we're on like that and then we would just set x to one so i'm going to run this through now um, try and get all uh, the drinks from all 17 pages um, i'll speed this up a bit because it's going to take a while
So that's it, we can see that that's run and that's finished. That took about six minutes to do. Um, so quite slow, really. Um, there are other things we can do to get around that and I will be looking into those probably for my next video. We can use uh, async to make it quicker. Um, but you can see here that we've got 797 lines, so 796 products of information that we have scraped from this website. Um, so hopefully you guys found this useful. Uh, let, me know in a, let me know in the comments below, drop a like, uh, subscribe. There is plenty of web scraping content on this channel already and plenty more to come. Cheers, bye.